Y'all can see who the boss lady is today. So that means uh, the real boss lady's running the truck. How are you? Good, how have y'all been? Good, good, good. Ready for it to be the weekend. Yeah, hoping the rain moves out, so. Yeah. Well. Go from great weather to wet weather, back to great weather, back to wet weather, don't we? I know we can't keep our kids from, if it's not one, it's the other, and it's like a revolving door. Which they're not sick, you know, like fever, nothing like that. It's just this weather. They like yep. to run around barefoot. Might be my doings, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Well, well, what cool and exciting stuff y'all got this week? Well, honestly, we got some of our oil filter wrench things back in, don't we? Oh, yeah. Finally, we got those. And we had print villains do us some. Hats. Oh yeah, those are cool. Our customers like the different colors. Mm -hmm. We like to, you purchase something, we give away one of those for free. You know, those like are a nice. box. <laughs> that purple box goes good with that pink hat up there. Something. Yep, that 80s box, everybody likes that thing. Yeah, we've got a few people that really want it. It's just, you know. I remember back when uh, it was actually in the 80s. That was before y'all's time, but they had the different uh, Pepsi cans. Oh. And they was all themed with 80s stuff. That was pretty cool. See, my mama, she was born in the 70s and had me young. So I grew up, you know, that's all I liked was mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I understand that part. There'll never be another <laughs> generation that had that good of music. Because, no. man, that was the... The decade that rock and roll really took off right there. Yeah. Well, see, when stuff. Michael and I got married, his daddy always listened to Funkadelic Friday, and I didn't know what it was. Yeah. So he'd be out there, and then our little girl, our oldest one at the time, she would just dance with him, and I mean, it's nothing like it. You can't do that with this, <laughs> yeah. this kind of generation's yeah. music. You cannot go out on your front porch and dance. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, that was some good music back then, man. It was, it was really good. I yeah. enjoyed all the hair bands, that was good back in the day. Mm -hmm. Well, we did get, uh, speaking of something, it's not a tool, it's a knife. I guess you could use it as a tool. I thought it was pretty neat. Somebody wanted it yesterday, but they had to ask their wife if they could get it. It's really not that expensive, I promise. But You know, that's your... sad that you have to do that, because I bet his wife don't call him and say, hey, can I buy some of this MAC makeup, or what's some other expensive brands? Oh, yeah, man, I don't buy Makeup. Look, I guarantee I'm an Amazon you, I guarantee you she's not calling saying, Hey, do you care if I buy this thirty five dollar tube of mascara or whatever? It's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm a the boy's gonna have to quit being whooped. Now, granted, before I spent thirty grand on a toolbox, I yeah. discussed it with my wife. But I don't call her have you ever seen me call my wife and say, Hey, can I buy this off the Macco truck? No, but I've seen her come up here and say, hey, I want these sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hey. Look at him, old clean shaving this morning. <laughs> that's funny. Man, you must have you must have had a flash fire and it singed it off or something. Not quite. I just figured if I was going to sit in the boss lady's seat, I didn't need a beard to few people too much. <laughs> no, I honestly just got tired of messing with it. Uh -huh. It's. I mean, people, people with, with a beard want to admit it right away, but a beard's a lot of work. It is. So, I grew mine out and it was itchy and scratchy, yeah. and then in the summertime it was hot and it was rough. I, I don't know. It's uh, it, You don't realize how much it changes what you can eat as well. Because it's hard <laughs> yeah. to go sit down in a restaurant and, and really dive into a hamburger, well, really anything. Hamburger ice cream, anything. especially, like an ice cream cone, yeah. I'd have it all over me. Like every time we went out to eat, she was always across the table going, This. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. <laughs> no, I woke up uh, Sunday morning and told her, I said, I think I'm going to shave my beard. And she messed up and gave me the out. She said, well, go do it. I'm, you got my interest peaked. 
she didn't believe I'd do it. It, it happened, though. I bet it was a sink full of hair that first go over, wasn't it? Oh, uh, it was a lot of hair. Yeah. Our little boy about didn't know who he was. <laughs> yeah, he was kind of shy coming around the door. He was like, mm, yeah. let me hear you talk first. <laughs> well, see, he's never seen him without a beard, so. Yeah. Well, that's mm -hmm. good. I bet it felt like he was walking into an air conditioner after you get it off, wasn't it? Uh, it felt a lot different. We, uh, it got kind of cool Sunday night, and I went outside. And it's like, oh wait a minute. Yeah. What's this? What's this cold on my face? Well, my you face look like cold. you you like turned back the clock about 15 years. That's yeah. what I told him. Yeah. You'll be getting carded if you. Well, you don't dip or anything, uh, but like if you went in to even buy dip, they'd be like, let me see your ID. <laughs> you don't have to be but 18 to buy dip, but you would, uh, you'd yeah, probably get I, carded. Uh, I don't think so, I, but she, she seems to think so. I think he looks a lot younger. Mm -hmm. I know uh, our first expo, she got carded constantly in Vegas because they thought she was underage. Yeah. And uh, that was fun. <laughs> I think it's make you feel good, right? If you're, <laughs> yeah. if you're old enough. Yeah, like a guy, you don't really care one way or the yeah, other if you I, get I carded. But like a girl, if you're over 21 and you get carded, that means you got something going on right. Like, I mean, you don't look your age. So. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I look at it different, but that's that's how I look at it. I think if I was a girl, I'd be like, yeah, I'll get carded. That's fine. <laughs> All right, I got sidetracked. We was talking about guys oh. getting whooped and Go ahead. having to ask permission to buy stuff. So she's oh, going to yeah. show us the knife. Go ahead. Uh, this is just one of them. Did you sell the other one? I did. Base? Yeah. Uh, this is just one that my customers really like. Of course, it's non-folding, but it does come with a case to keep it in. Um, boy, if you have to ask your wife for a knife, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. um, any big purchases, we agree to talk to each other, but she wouldn't care if I come home and bought a knife. Sounds like an echo in here, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, That's exactly what I said. Uh, yeah, this here, the, they really like the, the handle on it because it has the bone look to it and everything. Um, really good sharp knives. We've actually loaded the truck up with knives between the Smith & Wesson and uh, a couple of the other ones that are coming in. My guys really like the knives. and I'll wouldn't have thought that like machete style knives would sell as well as they do but out of the um i ordered 12 at expo a couple different styles i've got one left hanging on the wall so that tells me that they really like those too um, yeah. which a good pocket knife is just something that everybody needs to have um, especially in the industry that we're all in right now uh, you're constantly opening parts and stuff like that but mm -hmm. um I'm a fan of these knives if I'm going out uh, in the woods or something, but I wouldn't want to carry this everyday working on a car because I'd right. be afraid to scratch something. Um, but I picked this Smith & Wesson out for myself and they've sold really well. Uh, I like it because of how it, it opens so quick. Mm -hmm. I also like that blade on it. I don't know why I like that blade so much. but um, That's cool. I gotta remember, we don't have a mic on you. It's real low, so yeah. <laughs> I apologize, uh, well, guys. We can swap it over. It is fine. <laughs> I forgot about that completely right there. Yeah, if you can't hear me, that's okay. Here, well, I'll here. take the mic over. Thank you. <laughs> She's glad to give you that mic. Well, Everybody was so proud of you because you finally come out of your shell because, you know, it took you like almost a year, year and a half before you would even talk on camera. Yeah. Where she realized it won't jump out and eat you. Well, you know, I was kind of the same way when the, the whole tool truck video started. <clears throat> We're just both shy people. Mm -hmm. So it took me, what, three times? Three trips up here? And then we finally did a video, so. <clears throat> I get the mic on and then I can't hardly talk. Um, <laughs> we've also got uh, some blue knives in. I know everybody likes the blue knives. We've showed those before as well. I did uh, get an invoice this morning for some really cool creepers that we had ordered. So that means that they're gonna be in next week. I'm looking forward to showing them off. They are a limited time run. Some of y'all are gonna see them before we get to the video next week. Um, what, it was an eagle on one, and what was the other one? The flag? I have a video of it. Um, they look really nice. Cool. Um, so if your dealer has them, know that they are limited time, and, and they'll tell you that they were you know, hey, we're gonna do this at Expo, see how it goes over, so. Um, they're the good metal 
uh, rails on the side of them. It's not your typical, just your plastic creeper, mm -hmm. which everybody knows the plastic creepers are nice to have because that's the one I'm throwing around and everything yeah. else. But um, I like a good padded one too. Uh, I like how easy those <coughs> plastic ones roll. Yeah. Man. Well, they, they've got the um, rollerblade style wheels mm -hmm. on them and that was a big improvement. You wouldn't have thought how much that would improve uh, you know, the hard plastic, that's great. That's what we know knew for years. And then when companies started going with the rollerblade style, they hold up better, they last longer. Now they, they are, you're going to have to replace them eventually. I'm not going to say you're not, but um, when they went to that, they really upgraded the, the quality of the creeper at that point. Um, I've had people run over their plastic creepers and the only thing that messes up on them usually is it pushes the actual wheel through the plastic, which that's gonna happen. I mean, if you run over it, we're talking about thousands of pounds. So um, I have guys all the time asking me if it'll hold them. I've never had one and it wouldn't. Um, so the, the plastic creepers are great. I like the padded ones as well. The mm -hmm. designs on these are really nice. So they're coming in. Uh, and I heard um, through the grapevine yesterday that we had a bunch of back order starting to ship uh i'm not going to tell the guys that it was i'm not going to name them um but wow some of y'all's distributors went out all out and when i say all out i'm talking about um some of them's got tool bills that's well over a hundred thousand so wow. um some of your distributors went way out so y'all should have a full truck here soon so if you're if you've been on the line and saying that they're you know your, your tool dealer's truck is is looking bare. We've all suffered the back orders, but we have a lot coming in. So the, the only downside to that is not everybody orders the same inventory. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of mine hasn't shipped yet, but theirs has. So if your dealer says, hey, mine hasn't shipped yet, he's telling the truth, his hasn't shipped yet. Um, but some of y'all are gonna be really lucky. You got a lot of stuff coming in at good deals. Um, did you show the blue wrench things yet that's no, come in? not yet. So we had talked about the blue being available. Everybody is going nuts over the green ones. Uh, just, I mean, rightfully so, they're really nice. Mm -hmm. um, it really surprises me how many people haven't took advantage of the fact, um, you know, I'm seeing them all over the carts, all over the toolboxes, um, just your normal standard place. I'm challenging people to get, get outside that comfort zone and go put it on your rack. If you've got mm -hmm. a dedicated rack, now if you ain't got a dedicated rack, I understand. But like you, you have a dedicated mm -hmm. rack, you know where it is. I am, And when I was there, I only had one rack as well. They've got two racks now, but you're still gonna have your favorite rack, right? It's easier to get into, it's closer to my box, whatever it might be. Put that on the side of the rack. Right. And then grab you um, either the new four, um, I don't know if we've talked about it yet or not, but the little collapsible cups that we have, they have one now that's got four all together. Grab you some of those to throw your bolts in, whatever it may be, uh, these flexible magnets, whatever it might be. That way you find yourself leaving that um, area a lot easier. So yeah. when you're pulling, right. whether it be rack and pinion, transmission, I don't care what you're doing. If you're underneath it, that's where it's really going to to advantage you then mm. um you know i see a lot of guys throughout the day they're you know i go in i'm handing out flowers i'm talking they're walking back and forth to the box that's great if you're trying to lose weight like i've been um but if, if you're already small and don't need to do all that walking throw this up there when you're underneath mm. there take advantage of it they got socket holders that do the same yeah. uh, i can't think of a better thing to have uh, and i've got some screwdriver um, magnetic screwdriver holders coming too if you had your screwdrivers, your uh, and there's enough room on the rack, it may be mm. tiered or whatever, but if you've got your screwdrivers, your sockets, and your wrenches on your rack, boy, you're, you're not running back and forth to that toolbox anymore. You know, I bought that magnetic pad. Yeah, yeah, we sold them on there, and yep. That was the best thing I ever did. Yeah, so if you have those, uh, this, I mean, you're not losing all the bolts and stuff that's normally falling because we've all got a bad habit of, of taking it out stacking it Setting up, it up. Um, yeah. and the next thing we know we they're they're falling off because we're having to use our hammer or mm -hmm. uh if you're putting an axle in um you're doing like that little exercising thing that you can buy at walmart you know you're normally trying to beat it in with <laughs> itself so uh and you're trying to make sure the clip on the end of it yeah. I don't think all axles have that clip. I think um, Volkswagen's bolt in. That's got to be a great design. Mm -hmm. uh, besides having to have the special um, 
triple square to get it out. Uh, it's just so easy to unbolt it and go. I, I love the side-by-sides that have that mm -hmm. and the cars that have that just because it's quick and easy. We've all got that axle that we've, we've had a Locked air hammer. Never got out. Man. Yeah. <clears throat> I can. Beating it with a hammer and everything else. Yeah, well, and you know, they have the Texas Twister that, that you can turn your air hammer into a puller. That's great. Um, because if you're using a air hammer with just a regular bit on it, I have watched people slip off the axle and hit the uh, upper oil pan, and we all know how big of a hassle that is. Right. Now, yeah, if we want a backyard fix it, they sell JB Weld engine block repair, we can mm -hmm. do that. But if I was a customer and I found out later that was the fix, I wouldn't be happy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so these would keep that, you know, the wrenches from falling off the rack arms and, and stuff like that. So Well, my favorite thing is those nut cups like you got there. I've got a pair <laughs> on each side of my rack. So yeah. I've got a total of four. Man, that's the greatest thing ever to throw, you know, your lug nuts in or if you're doing a brake job, you put all the hardware in that one cup for each side. You that's know, it. Perfect. Well, and the whether you're doing drum brakes, I know we don't do them very often. But you know, those little clips that hold the spring in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you push it in and you turn. Yep. Those little things are hard to find anywhere. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, if that thing hits the floor, you're not finding it. Yep. And once that happens, you're calling all your parts houses and every one of them's telling you the same thing. Well, I can get them, but I don't have them right now. Yep. It's gonna take me a couple um, of days to get them in. So what we're seeing is we had a single version, um, still do, it's just on the shelf back there. Uh, and when we got the two-piece, if you're thinking about getting that, go ahead and get the two-piece. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't, if your dealer only has the single, if he does like me and ordered heavy on the single before he realized what, how great they was, um, buy two of them, yeah. of the singles. And the reason I'm telling you that is because you're going to be coming back and you're going to be getting another one uh, and because there's two sides of a car. And if you're doing brakes, you're usually doing two sides. Um, That's sort of like those little spring clips that go on like transmission lines or AC lines to hold them on, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Uh, if they and... ever hit the ground, they must disintegrate because you will never, ever, never, ever find them things. Yeah, there, there's those and then, uh, and I've seen some people do some weird fixes on that. I've seen people lose clips and use zip ties. Man, I know it works, but that's scary. Mm -hmm. that, that zip tie is plastic. <clears throat> it gets brittle. It breaks. They're going down the road there you are with a, a line transmission fluid leaking or mm -hmm. something like that. But also, um, somewhere you can't use a zip tie that I know of is on the door handles. If you're in a body shop and you're still working on stuff old enough that you gotta take that clip out, yeah, that the one that you try to push clip. in, and it, yep. if you're not just straight, <laughs> it's it's gone. It's, gone. Um, yeah. it's good to keep those in that. You know, yeah. I when technicians first start out, I always recommend the same thing, you know, to put them in a bag, write what it is, till you learn and get mm -hmm. used to taking it apart and going back. Um, and, and that's the part of your brain that you really, you, you build on is that, that memory, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there may be 60 bolts there, but by the time, or a cow panel, you, we all know if we're doing engine work, it just all goes in the cow panel. We, yeah. we try to separate it, but it mixes together. Um, you get that muscle memory to where you can go up there and separate it. That's when those are nice. Mm -hmm. When you can just throw everything in a, in a cup, it's not get it's not getting lost. It's not falling. Um, it, I mean, it's right there. I said that on the brake jobs. I've seen people here. Um, the newer kids are starting to do brakes different than I did. They'll do the front and then the back, and then they'll go over and do front and back. See, I always did front and front. That's what I do. Front back front. back. But if they, they're not doing drum brakes, because if they would, they <coughs> definitely have that other side open before they touch it, because. Yeah. I don't care how many times you've done a drum brake, there's gonna be that day where you're not gonna, your, your wiring in your brain is not connecting. You're like, where the hell does this go? And you have to go to the other side to look at it and like, oh. Okay. I think it's an age thing okay. because I used to be able to tell a story from start to finish without getting confused. Uh, this morning I was trying to tell her something that happened yesterday. She ran the truck by herself yesterday. And I was trying to tell her something that had to happen during the day. And it, nothing happened. I mean, nobody started talking, nothing happened. We were, we were driving up here, honestly. Uh, nothing got my attention, but I got to a certain part and I couldn't tell you the rest of it. Like, I don't, I, I forgot what I was doing, where I was at. And, and, you're still and so young. she had to pick up and say, okay, <laughs> so you were at this point. And it's like, oh yeah, this is, you know. Yeah. Um, same way with drum brakes. Like I have done tons of Toyota drum brakes. 
I still would do one side, yeah. get you know, adjust it, but I also wanted to be able to run over there and see what the feeling was. Yep, that's you know, that's about right. Um, because I want to, normally when you're doing drum brakes, there's a customer complaint, right? It's yeah. usually not, hey, I just want to do drum brakes. Because mm -hmm. if you are, you're slapping them on the back of the head going, hey, they're fine. You know, the pad <laughs> thickness is fine. What are you doing? Uh, now, if it's been soaked and uh, Toyotas were bad about when the wheel bearings were going bad, it would soak the brake uh, to the shoes. Uh, it, would, it would be a real nice smell too. But um, I understand that. But when there's a customer concern, a lot of times I want to, I want to verify it, right? So let me do this side. Um, once I drive it, verify it, determine what it is. When I go to the other side, let me let me just reconfirm. Yep, this one was the same mm -hmm. way because I want to be able to tell the customer, hey, yeah, the 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 wear on the brakes were even on both sides um, because I want to know that that everything that the cables are adjusted right yeah. and even um, get a little deeper into brakes. Um, I've seen master cylinders. You know, it's usually front and rear and front and rear on two different sides. Um, I've seen them go bad and, and, and these two brakes be wearing out completely faster than the other. And it's like, okay, well, I need to be able to tell the customer why that's happening. Mm -hmm. So being able to um, throw everything, them clips that everybody gets new and just throws right away, um, that'll help you save your old ones. Cause I know, I know a lot of people do that. Yeah. If, if the clip, if the clip in the car is on the thing, we gre hopefully we put a little grease on it and then we slap <laughs> it back together. Um, but I've, you know, there's all kind of good practices on doing brakes. But um, other than that, just I mean, as you can see, the truck's getting fuller and fuller. Um, we have the big blue box sold. It's getting dropped off. It actually sold last week. Of course, you see the blue box up here. It's sold. Um, I'm really surprised I ain't got it by myself today because we did good enough last week that she could have took off, but uh, she wanted to ride with me. It was raining, so that's my <laughs> excuse, and I'm sticking to it. That's a good excuse. <laughs> the uh, That's raining. There's nothing better to do. I'll go to work with you today. The, yeah, that's not how that went down, but that's what I'm going to go with. But uh, this is a repo. Unfortunately, that does happen. Yeah. Um, everybody does repos different. I gave this guy way too long to to come around I'm, I'm talking about way too long and so we ended up repoing this one so it'll be at a good price we do have to do a mandatory time limit um but we we got one to pick up today it's 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 different um i had to remember i'm not ordering for me uh i'm hoping i fall in love with it and see it it's multicolored. um i think it was it gray and red that i should um I already, you know, it, it's growing on me just seeing the pictures. But so a new toolbox here, probably have a table up because it's kind of hard getting boxes right now, but that one is sold. Uh, so we'll have another shelf in here and I've got uh, more inventory coming in. I think I got an email saying five more boxes were coming in. So Holy like uh, packages, not toolboxes, packages. <laughs> oh, that's insane, man. No, that, uh, be some toolbox sales going on now. <laughs> man, toolboxes right now are really hard to get anyway. So uh, there's a lot of dealers that went heavy at Expo with boxes. Um, so that's put the toolbox plant even a little further behind. Um, so, you know, just work with it while we can, you know, materials and stuff. I don't have to talk about back orders, but as you can see, the truck's not hurting for stuff. Um, we also got, I don't know if I've showed the hammer before that breaks tires down. Mm -hmm. We've got it, we've got a regular sledgehammer. Um, it's interesting listening to the guys who, and you working on big trucks, you can tell me the proper way. I've never had to use one of those hammers to do tires. Yeah. But apparently there's several ways um we've had three different people tell us how they do them in three different ways um but we're guessing that the hook on the back of it there is to hook it onto the rim and help pry it up over it, it no i actually would take oh you're talking about this yeah i have no idea what that's for i've never seen one of that that's the only thing that i can guess that's more like new school than the old junk i got but <laughs> I thought she was talking about this. Yeah. I was no, like, I, that's what I initially break the bead with. But I have no idea what that's for. Maybe well, see, I'm, and I had a bigger one, and that's what I thought. See, I that thought handle, like I wouldn't want that one. I need a long handle. We had a long I'm handle. Too damn one. old to bend over. <laughs> we had a long handle <laughs> one, and it and the guy had to go back and forth. He didn't know which one he wanted. Then he kind of wanted two, and and then he's like, yeah, no, I don't want to have to have two. Um, 
But I have no idea what this. So for. you initially break it with this, mm -hmm. and then you uh, use it to pull it up over it, or how, how do you? Or no, you got I another a, deal? I use a spoon. Somebody, or a, you know, I've got that gold tool too. Yeah, somebody sent you a good tool to do that with too. I think, but uh, yeah, the, he was telling us he uses this first, and then he goes to this. Uh, I don't know. There's a couple different ways, but the I only thing I can think of, for. the only thing I can think of, is to hook it onto the rim and use it to pry up. You know, other than the spoon, that would hook onto the rim. I'm guessing. I don't know. It's got to have some kind of purpose. I don't um, know. Somebody I can probably will do tell it. us. I guarantee you. I, somebody who uses one every day can probably tell me um, if they've got the new style. If not, they're probably just as lost as we are right now. But I don't know. Um, that's that's like a 2020 version. I've got like a 1960 <laughs> version. Yeah. Um, there's hundreds of versions I think of them, but that's uh, like tire spoons. They make different tire spoons and tire irons and all that. And there's probably one way better than the one that I have, but I like the way the lips made on it. I can do it really fast and kind of like your favorite pair of pliers, honestly. Mm -hmm. Once you, even if it's the worst pliers in the world, if that's the ones you've got used to in your head, they are the best ones because they're the ones on the pliers they can do the spring clamps they can do all those you get yeah. used to them you get them more to where it just i mean it's just easy same way with tire tools mm -hmm. um when i first started my journey in this industry i actually was in parts first but, and moved on but i got at one point i was over tire I, I did tires i was the tire guy and i knew when somebody swapped the tire tools up it's like no i hate this one why yeah. uh, well that's my favorite well i don't care you're not back here <laughs> yeah. where's the one that was back here you just get used to it yeah. That's Same great. way with the hammers. Uh, you hand a new, that hammer to somebody, and that hook may get in the way for them, mm. and boy, the cussing starts in because it's just not as good, right? But then the kid that learns with that, the one that the he's one like, that you uses, need to get this old junk out of here. <laughs> well, cars in general. How many times have you heard people say, "Well, it looks like they got a stupid computer on the dash." Mm -hmm. You know, it's that um, Fords have the, the really big screen screens. and stuff, but. Uh, I like touch screens, so mm. I, that's right up my I alley. I like them until they go out. Everything breaks. Um, <laughs> it's all fun and games, so they quit working. Well, and you know, more and more AC machines are going to that too, and that does kind of scare me on um, the, which even on our scanners and stuff, the more and more you get away from the buttons, we've got to tell people, hey, yes, this is made to be tougher than your normal average thing, but remember, this is still a touch screen. It's still got glass that you're touching. If you break it, that's it. Don't yeah. get mad and start aggressively pressing a button. If it ain't doing something, what, uh, computers get confused every once in a while, and I don't care what kind of computer it is, or maybe you're pressing the wrong button. <laughs> Calm down. Take a break. Take it's a break. Right. So these new AC machines, I've got people pricing them, and when I tell them they got a digital screen, well, I want one with knobs. It's like, I can still get one, but just know that they're phasing out. So mm. when it completely phases out, there we are you eventually you're going to be to where you're i mean i you're probably going to end up to where you're going to gas stations that have nobody anyway it's just a computer screen so get I used see. to it really but um be careful i guess right that's uh, true i think that's all the new stuff this week i got some more coming in but um if i haven't showed the four piece cup thing i'll show it right so you can do it individually i wouldn't i do it all at four times that way the magnet but basically they're all together they don't separate so you're not going to you're not going to fumble around and lose them or something that would be really good for the new guy that wants to keep bolts all separate mm -hmm. uh, plus it is magnetic it is got rubber uh, the magnets are actually on the inside so therefore you're not going to scratch a car uh, so that's cool i still think i like the individual ones better from what i would use at, it, and this is going to be where you're at as a tech um but you know i'm not afraid because it's rubber i'm not afraid to stick it on the front of a toolbox or anything like that but uh the individual would be what i would want because i'm gonna put as many and i'm gonna, I'm gonna have this thing pulled. It mound it up yeah yep. like the beginning of the job is gonna be way down here mm -hmm. but that's also gonna benefit me because it's also the last thing i'm gonna go back with um and then the ending job's right up here but mm -hmm. most of your newer techs they're gonna want to keep everything separate for a while or need to for some reason when you're n new into the industry everything goes in a pile and you don't know what to go back with and then when you get older you're still separating them on the cow panel <laughs> yeah. um i don't know and it don't do any good because somebody's gonna come up there and hit something it's gonna knock them all down man anyway. i had a tech one time i was working and he we all we all got bolt bins and everything else and he took 
uh, a handful of bolts and just threw up there with it, which it was a job that I'd done hundreds of thousands of times, probably not really, but that, um, would, that would be aggravating. Between like, me where and the him, hell did that bolt go? <laughs> yeah, between me and him, we knew where stuff went, um, and we knew the bolt because he didn't put a bolt that was like size that we could have messed anything up. Um, but it, it started a good little war for a little while. I'd take one bolt over and stick on his, and he'd bring one and stick on mine, and it's like, where the hell did this bolt come from? I've done this a hundred times. Well, you know what it means when you got bolts left over anyway, don't you? I uh, just did it better than the engineer designed it. That's right. Yep. Like, look at the money they could have saved by not putting those three bolts and those 300,000 cars this year. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> right. Well, man, they, they, they got bolts. It seems like an engineer will put a thousand bolts in something that don't need but two and then something that you would think would need and a thousand. And they're going to put one bolt behind something that you have to take three other things apart to get to. Well, you I have to do that. That has to be like page number three of their yeah you know their tests when they get ready to graduate engineer school is how many bolts can you hide where you have to take a lot more stuff off than needed well i can tell you if i do your tune-up on a avalon or a sienna van there is a bolt on the back of the intake that's not going back on it don't hold the intake in uh, it's a bracket that is almost impossible to get out but i will tell you before i do that job i'm not putting that bolt back in uh, and if you tell me you want it back in, I'll get it back in, but I won't do the tune-up the next time because it is a pain to get out. No, I seriously, I'd do it again. Um, I like going back the way it come out, but I would tell people, hey, look, this you bolt right really here, have to have it. It, it, it's right here. I'm going to leave that out. Okay, that's fine. You know, it's, I can't tell you how many. You know, sometimes it's better off just not to say nothing. Well, I want to be honest uh, on, that, on that part. If I'm not putting something back, I'm going to say, hey, this is why I'm not putting it back. But that bolt, I'm sure it has a purpose. Um, but that's on your older Sienna vans and Avalons. And I've done a bunch of them and told them I wasn't going to put it back. They were fine with it. The initial response was, well, why? Well, let me show you why. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. And it's normally I can save you money. Mm -hmm. I can save you money by not putting this in there because instead of charging you two and a half hours, I'm going to charge you an hour and a half. Yep, okay, don't put it in there. So, yeah. All right, well, here's the bolt. Let's go that way. Here, here's your bolt. If Just you want to put it in bolt. If, you, might, you might need it on somebody else's later. <laughs> yeah, if you want to put it back in there. But I was the type that uh, uh, wiring harnesses, I wanted to use a good clip tool to where I wouldn't break in the harnesses. Yeah. I wanted to go back, and boy, if the freaking clip broke on the... Took me a long time to get over that, but uh, on the spark plugs, if the clip broke, that got on me. I mean, that I was so mad. I was taking a little screwdriver, trying to do it real carefully. If mm -hmm. they ever break, it weighs on me because it's like that's not right. And you can't just buy a clip. You yeah, can't just buy the ends. Just buy the ends. If you could just buy the ends, deep in it, we sell great deep in tools. Like <laughs> they do that for a reason. I don't understand it. Make more money. I understand, but there's in, these engineers out there, and their their theory, they won't tell you that. They'll tell you, well, the reason we did that is because of the, the quality that it takes and the precision that it takes to put it together. Bull crap. You have me literally pulling engines apart, doing the, you know, you rebuilding don't think the I engines. You can a new end on, Hoss? Yeah, like, <laughs> like airbags. You airbags. Gotta, I guarantee you, you can show your little boy how to put new ends on. After four or five times of him watching you, he could do it. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. Six time. That's the qu the the qu uh, quantity eventually equals quality, right? Mm -hmm. The more that I do, the better the quality gets. Um, Toyota had a recall on a airbag harness, and they finally decided, hey, we're gonna let you put a new end on this. It's like great. I'm glad you trust us to do this now, but all in the future and everything else, you're gonna tell me I can't do an airbag harness because the precision, the the precision and the quality that it takes to do that job. Um, my skill level ain't enough, I guess. Um, but you trust me to do everything else. Mm. It's it's like, look, if you don't send a, temp, a a sample, let me do it and send it back, and you grade it. If it's yeah. not right, we'll keep doing it until I do it right. And I'll do a couple, whatever. Um, but insurance companies, they don't want to pay for new harnesses. Most of the time, they want you to replace them. Uh, torque wrenches, boy, it gets on my nerves with torque wrenches. Um, the digital ones, with every company are going to where you have to send them in after so many, or if it gets yeah, over so many cycles. Yeah, um, which we've actually, most of our dealers, uh, we know the code to reset uh, a cycle counter, but if it's over torqued, you have to send it in. Why? Let me put it on a, uh, they've, they've got the torque gauges. Mm -hmm. Let me check it. Yep, it's right. 
give me the option to reset it. Like, if I can't do oh, that. I don't want to do that, then, you know, might be some liability. That could be wrong. Yeah. 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 It's all about lawsuits, man. I just don't understand that, though, because. Well, when you go down the road, how many times you see a lawyer billboard that says, did you get hurt in an accident? But shouldn't well, that get be. get you billions of dollars? Shouldn't that be on the, um, the person, though? Like, if, hey. If you want to reset it, you're taking responsibility. Like, have a button to check there where it says, you know, you mm. know that you take full responsibility of well, it. Well, the problem is when, you know, what's one of them big fancy lawyers that get on well, the yeah. They're not going to be calling Matco. They're well, and saying, well, wait, 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 the technician reset that. Like, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's all about the money. It all rolls downhill, and everybody wants the big chunk of the pie. And I do get it. I do uh, with the engineers, or not the engineers, the uh, lawyers and stuff like that. But, man, if it, it, if we're suing over that when we know we did it on our own, maybe we should be looking at ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, I've said that a million times, you know. Yeah, like, people are so sue happy. That's like the lady that got burnt with a cup of coffee at McDonald's. Yeah. Um, like... How many times do you go to a restaurant and say, oh, no, 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 I don't want my coffee hot. I would like to have it room temperature, please. <laughs> I know you don't drink coffee, but yeah, I nobody, don't. I mean, you either order iced coffee or you order regular coffee. And yeah. regular coffee is always hot. Like, if you're too dumb to realize that cup of coffee's hot, you shouldn't be, you, they should take your privilege away to sue at that point. <laughs> That's They're, like the people that stuck their hand up in that hair dryer and they got a couple million dollars. You know, the restaurants got those hair dryers. Stuck his hand up in there and got electrocuted. Yeah. Um, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Seriously, you know. They say that every warning label comes or every cautionary label comes because of somebody, uh, something that's actually happened. Uh, you know, we did the light time that time. It said don't use the light on the ladder or mm -hmm. something like that. I don't remember what exactly what it was. Well, but the battery's got that thing that says don't drink the contents of this battery. Yeah. It's pretty uh, stupid. You but know, now you got vi videos on the internet where kids eating Tide Pods. Yeah, I've got serious questions about that. Well, they're, and they're having to put taste deterrence in almost everything now. <laughs> it's you know, ridiculous, You used man. to put taste deterrence. It's crazy. You know, you used to put it in like... Um, coolant and stuff because to a kid it would look like kool-aid that's a kid i understand it looks like something but as an adult if you have to have a taste deterrent and uh and uh i about called it uh kool-aid and coolant to keep you from drinking it well you're about an idiot yeah. like i understand in kids i do um <laughs> and bleach they have to tell you not to get it you know Oh, it's, man, it's ridiculous. Like, how stupid are people? Don't like, ingest really? it. Like, really? You have to tell people don't drink bleach? Yeah. Well, my mom never had to tell me, ever, to not drink bleach. Yeah. Now, my mama did tell me, don't touch that iron, it's hot. And what did I do? I touched that iron. Because she told you not to? Well, it, I thought, well, it's cooled down enough by now, right? So, to this day, I've still never touched the bottom of the iron. I don't give a damn if it's in the closet with the cord wrapped around it. I don't touch the metal part. I will touch the handle. But you will never catch me touching the metal part. I learned that lesson, too, but I learned it with, um, I, th I think it was a soldering iron. I learned real quick that there are certain tools that you pick up every time from a certain end. End of story. <laughs> exactly. And that's just, like, that's just like a grinder. If at, By this time, if you've got a... Um, an angle grinder that plugs into the wall or wherever mm -hmm. if you're not used to turning that thing upside down and putting it to where the blade if, if that's not even if it's unplugged you got the yeah. cord wrapped around you still it still flip it upside down uh yeah. if the cord's wrapped around it and you still don't lay it on this back because you have watched the video seen or done where you've laid it down wrong when it's plugged up boy it's coming um learn that's by like fire a skill so i learned the hard way with it you know, if you cut a lot of stuff with a skill saw, that sawdust will impact behind yeah. the guard, and the guard will stay up. Yep. Well, my whole life, I would just get through cutting with a skill saw and set it down. down. Until it takes off like a rocket. Yep, until it runs across the floor. Uh, I think my my favorite phrase to my kids is, don't be stupid. Yeah. Um, that's just a generic overall I don't have to tell you not to do a whole lot of things. I do. I end up having to tell them not to do that, don't do this. But um, main theory, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Like, 
if if you do it and you get hurt, <laughs> then you were probably doing something stupid at some point. Yeah. I mean, that's how you learn in life, right? I mean, I learned by doing dumb stuff when I was a kid, but to the point where I never said, "Hey, let's drink that battery." Or, you know, there's a jug of antifreeze over there that could probably taste like lemon Kool-Aid or well, lime Kool-Aid. I Let's think drink it. I think the problem with that is we used to get told that's your fault. Yeah. That you touch the iron, that's your fault. It's yeah. not your mom's fault for unplugging it and not immediately putting it away. You got to let it cool mm -hmm. down, right? But in today's society, it seems like everything is the other person's fault. Like, oh well, my kid drunk bleach. Well. That's, that's the that's Clorox's fault. That yeah, they that's, shouldn't put a label on there. Yeah, it's not the parents' fault for not having it put away from the kid, or. Um, but they shouldn't eat Tide Pods because they made Tide Pods look like a big old giant thing of candy. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a juicy fruit, right? No, that's not <laughs> what that crazy, is. Right? Like we're we're having. I saw a commercial the other day where they made the what they say they made the top to where they couldn't open it, and then they made them less appealing. Really. You're somebody in a marketing scheme somewhere is having to make them less appealing. Yeah. No, that's not y'all's fault. Stop taking and, I and would, that's I'd be like, look, if your kid's dumb enough to eat the Tide Pod and he dies, don't call us. Like you need to look in the mirror and go, I failed as a parent that I didn't teach my kid if it's in the laundry room, it ain't to eat. Well, and, the and, bleach is to put on the clothes to make white. It don't make your teeth white. It will eat your guts out. Don't touch this. Yeah, well, you know, and, like that's where you need to step back as a parent and take responsibility for what you're it, doing. It, in the world. it starts from the very beginning, though, and that's the thing. Like you have to teach them that there's a cause and reaction. Um, the cause for you getting burnt was touching the iron. Mm -hmm. The reaction was it hurt. Yeah. Um, well, the problem is, guys, today. I, I feel like parents put you in front of a, you know, their kids in front of a television or a tablet, and that's yeah. the babysitter, right? Like, where I'm sure your parents was like mine, like, if they go and do something, you go too. If it sucks as a kid, oh well, you're going because you're my child. Like, that's, that's right. I've got to watch you, yeah. and you, you're uh, going. the only way I can watch you is you going through it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that goes back to, again, um, the TV, the, the, the tablet, it's not a good babysitter because there's a lot of stupid stuff on there again don't be stupid but um we, we've got it when they fall off that bicycle we can't blame it on the bicycle yep. at this point well that's your fault um you gotta learn how to hold it up she son. built a yeah <laughs> she built a ramp for the kids to go over on their bicycles and stuff and i watched my son last night now my son's bicycle does not have pedals um it's a, it's a balance bike so he has to use his feet uh there's times where i sit back and i'm like yep that's just not hurt. I don't stop him on purpose. Yeah. It's good that they learn that. Yeah. Now, if I think that it was going to be If it's going to be something serious, yeah, yeah. like you're going to say, wait a minute. If, go yeah, run, if run he's, car. Well, my son's got to the point to where he wants to jump off everything. So the other night, he was just going to jump off the back of the couch. No, we're not doing that. That's the tile floor. A, you might break my tile. B, I'll have a hospital bill. <laughs> yeah. We're not doing that. Um, I don't want a hospital bill. Mm -hmm. So if I know that, it, that, you know, if I even remotely think that my kids are going to get, you know, seriously hurt, then yeah, I'm gonna stop them. Um, but if I think that it's it's gonna teach him a valuable lesson and it's just gonna be an alley for a second, then you know mm. what? Let let him yeah, get that alley. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Um, we don't have that anymore. Um, I tell you another thing that we don't have. We was eating supper the other night, and there was this kid acting a straight up fool, like a fool. And this mama said this at least thirty. If you don't sit down and act right, I'm gonna tear you up. If you don't sit down and act right, I'm finna tear you up at least 30 times. When I was a kid, I heard that one time. The second time, everybody else heard it because I was getting the ever-living hell beat out of me. Like, there wasn't no child abuse. It yeah, was, it's, it's you empty took promises, that beating right? and you took it like a kid because you earned it. It's what you took, you know? Well, and, and that's the thing. It's, it's empty promises. Like, a kid yeah. knows. A kid's going to test it. Well, I, let me rephrase that. A human is going to test their abilities. Mm -hmm. And when they find that line that they can go to without crossing it, I guarantee you there's something that that mama does. Because she probably whoops the child every once in a while, but not enough. Uh, at one point or another, that kid knows what's just not. If she gets up, he's going to sit down. Yeah. or something she's going to do something but he knows until that happens the words are nothing it's just an empty promise so yeah, yeah I, I mean between my parents they they signed and sealed them religiously like yeah it's a good thing dhs wasn't as proactive like they are now back then because whew, my daddy when he got mad and it was time for a whooping it didn't matter what was laying around 
it was whatever was beside the hands which you're getting whooped with. Watched a video the other day. It Extension was stitching uh, cords. Yeah. Car antenna. Coat hanger. If you ain't never been whooped with a car a wire coat hanger, you're missing out on life. I'm just gonna tell you. Or My dad always had a belt. Cord. But I mean, I he always wears a belt like I do, so there's a belt always available, but. Uh, I watched a video the other day where uh, they were going to a disturbance call, and it was between a, um, it was a mom and a, a child. It was her son, but he was like 11, 12. Um, and the cop gets there, and he can he can hear it and stuff like that. And uh, his remaining response is, you need to whoop your child. And she's yeah. like, well, then, then child, you know, protective services is going to get me. He said, I didn't say to beat your child. I said to, to whoop your child. Yeah. He's like, do you need a belt? I have one. Uh, and he handed her a belt, and she whooped her child. Now, he didn't watch, you know. Mm -hmm. He stood outside, but the situation was over. That's I'm, Why? Why not do that? At 12, you're past the point of whooping. Like, well, you should gets, have done corrected your child enough. At 12, you yeah. can give them that look. Y'all know the look I'm talking about. Like, yeah. You finna get it. My daughter knows that and, look and, very well. And that's when you pump the brakes. And you, yes, sir. Yeah, my... <laughs> If you ain't got your child trained by the look at age of 12, you failed as a parent. My oldest daughter, she knows that look very well, and my youngest daughter knows that look very well. And and the fact that she's five and, and, and does that uh, tells me that I've done something right because exactly now right. I can look at her. And the only time she gets whooped uh, is if it's something that I've done told you a hundred times, <laughs> I ain't giving you that look this time. Like, you're going to know now not to do that. And uh, I love them to death, but I do not want them to grow up to be either so happy or it's not my fault. Like, mm. there's things in life that's your fault. So your kids will be the one telling the other kids, don't eat them Tide Pods. That's not a good idea. I don't know. The kids keep eating the Tide <laughs> Pods. They'll be banned. I mean, you know... We've got ban happy to where we ban oh, everything. Yeah. That cancel culture. I'm looking forward to the day cancel culture cancels cancel culture is what I'm looking forward to. Uh, you know, they, I, <laughs> I forget what it was over, but um, I think somebody the other day was, was talking about it, and we watched something on that um, to where they were actually, um, they had canceled something that benefited them, and now they were wanting it back, and it's like, no, you, it's canceled. It's gone. Too yeah. bad. Um that, that's the problem. I'm the kind of guy, if it don't mess with my bank account or my family, I don't care what you do. You know? I mean, if I was in your shoes and a guy wanted to buy this big blue toolbox right here, and he paid me for it, and he walked off his truck, and he says, Michael, I want you to unload it. I want to put it in that pothole right there. If he pays me, if it's paid in for... Sir, that's not going to be the best pothole filler, but if that's where you want it, buddy, here she goes. That's right. Let me make <laughs> I it, don't care what you do. Yeah, let me make it clear. Um, if if you pay it in full, it's yours. Yep. Do whatever you want with it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to advise you. Uh, I'm going to say, hey, look, just so you know, I'm not saying that this will work for that. And mm. once you acknowledge that you're doing it on your own free oh, will, yeah. I don't That's care. You. you can put yeah. that thing in front of an 18-wheeler, run it over, monster truck show. I'd be like, sir, I've got a bunch of sockets on there. I'll see you to fill in them gaps on the side. If if <laughs> if know? the monster truck company called me today and said, yeah. we want to do a monster truck show, but we do not want to use cars. We want to jump over Matco toolboxes. We want to do toolboxes. We're going to crush them. We're going to run over them. We're, we're going to park our trucks on them. Mm -hmm. Hey, you pay me in full, I don't care. Hey, and if you need an extra one and they're, they're paying really well, I'll, I'll wait on another special order box. We'll do a different hey, color. Wh <laughs> hey, what it, what color, what size? Uh, exactly here's right. my address. Uh, uh, here's my name. Please put it on the check. I'm going to pay it in full. You know, we have great quality toolboxes. We do. Once you buy that, I don't care what you do with it. I could care There's less. a lot of people that want to tell you what you need to buy and what you... That's why I never show products anymore that I purchase. I never discuss prices. I don't I do not do all that. I got so tired of, you shouldn't have bought this. You should have got this. You should have got that. Look, it's my money. It's my shop. It's my toolbox that's going in. I don't need nobody's opinion on nothing. Well, and, and the thing about that is, on a tool truck... Don't get me wrong. On a tool truck with lifetime warranty, if you use the tool wrong, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But now you're wanting it. Want now, if the monster truck people call me and said, hey, we used your toolboxes and- They all got bent up. I they're all bent up. They're pancake now. Like, I need a new one. 
Uh, no. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. <laughs> That's when I care. Don't, don't, but hey, if you tell me, hey, I'm going to buy this wrench, this lifetime warranty wrench, I'm going to buy this ratchet, I'm going to buy this, that, that, whatever, every lifetime warranty tool I have. If you tell me I'm buying them all, I'm going in there and I'm melting them down and I'm going to cast and make this statue, okay. Fine with me. You realize it ain't no warranty, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 okay. Can I watch you melt them down? Exactly. Let me video it. I'd probably be the first one to that monster truck show to watch it. I would too. I'd want to see how it's done, I would right? Too. I'd want to see them get crazy. But yeah, you I know, that's... I think they should do that. Think it, how many people would buy tickets just to watch them yeah. crunch a 30 grand toolbox. Well, and and that's why I get a kick out of the people that comment on, on different videos and, and you can buy it cheaper here. It's the exact same as this and mm. blah, blah, blah. Okay. Like... I don't Don't care. you think maybe don't we've said it enough that we don't have to go over it, but don't you think they may be buying from that distributor for his service or his attitude? Yeah. Or uh, maybe they got the same beliefs as you do. Raise your children right and don't let them eat tacos. Hey, you know, we, <laughs> we talked about the grocery stores. Uh, I went shopping the other day and I bought zero from Walmart. I bought every single bit of it from a local grocery store. And the reason that I did that is because mm -hmm. they're local. Yeah. It's a dollar or two higher on some stuff. So what? Yeah. Uh, and there is some stuff. I understand some stuff is, is priced higher, this, that, and another. But, you know, on every video, there's somebody, well, this person makes it. I've never hid that fact. Ever. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that about the grocery store. I actually went to the exact same grocery store that you're talking about here in town. And I'm... I carry my own groceries out. Like I used to carry everybody else's out when I was a kid. Like I can carry my own yeah. out, right? So I had all of it in the bags. And I was going out there to the car. I was waiting for the lift gate to come up. And the bottom, I was parked right there beside the building. The bottom fell out of my bag. My gallon of milk hit the ground and poof, exploded. I was like, you got to be kidding. So I put all the groceries in there. I take the empty jug and I go up there and was going to throw it in the garbage can right as you go in the door. The guy that owns the store now says, what happened with your milk? I said, my bottom fell out of my bag, busted. He goes, let me go get you another one. I said, no, no, it's my fault. I shouldn't have put that much junk in the bag. He said, let me go get you another one. You know, and the, the thing about that is, because I bagged at that very store, I can tell you that when you become a bagger, you better damn well pay attention. Because if you do that and you're putting chicken with any other type of mm -hmm. meat or anything that can, uh, um, strawberries, anything that can be taken and eat right. or out of way, you're about to get your butt chewed because that's not how they teach you to do it. Like, um, I don't know how they train their baggers now, um, but they had a manager there that would train the baggers when I went through and he would tell you real quick, we don't overload the bags, we do this. Mm -hmm. And you learn that weight, you learn that. Um, but I'm the same way now. Like if it's my own stuff, I have everything in one bag because that's less bags I got to take out, um, which they've got people to take it out. But uh, I'm like you, I do it myself. So if I'll overload my bag, that's fine. The good thing about that story is they pay attention mm -hmm. and they, they do that. But, they treat you right too. Yeah, they? the main thing with the tools though is they're coming to you, they're warrantying it, but you're also buying, that's the service, you know, the, the quality. But what happens when something happens and you need to trade that tool in for something else mm -hmm. i don't know of a tool de tool amazon ain't gonna do that i don't anymore. know of amazon going hey you don't use that tool no more let me trade that can i trade this tool in and get some money on it for this they're not going to do it now you That's can right. you can sell it yeah i understand that um it's just different you, you're going to buy a service <laughs> and you're supposed to be buying your dealer as well you, That's right. you should the dealer should be selling theirself so well, guys, that was a long one. We took you from brand new blue wrench racks all the way to Tide Pods and don't drink battery acid to buy a local at the grocery store. Don't be stupid. <laughs> don't be stupid. There you go. All right. Good advice from the boss lady and the other boss lady today. That's right. I'm right. <laughs> all right, guys. Like always, thanks for hanging out. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. Check over here for merchandise. Cool tools and discount codes down there. If you're not subscribed, take your finger. Click that button. It's free. Have a good one. See ya.